Okay, today we'll start the first lesson for your summer review packet for Algebra 1. If you recall in class uh, before school ended, I discussed with you the fact that the real number system review wasn't complete, and so I'm going to go through that with you to make sure that you understand the difference between the different types of numbers before you get started on the actual video. So, real numbers include two different sets of numbers. They include irrational numbers and they include rational numbers. Irrational numbers are decimals that never end and have no pattern. Uh, one of the ones that you're going to see most often is uh, the number pi. We all know that we generally round that to 3.14, but it is actually a decimal that never repeats and never ends. It never has any sort of a pattern. Other irrational numbers are going to be like the square root of 2. There are several others, and, and we'll look at those later. But if you figure out what the square root of 2 is, again, it is a decimal that doesn't end, and it has no pattern. Rational numbers are the ones that we're going to use probably most often during Algebra 1, and so we do need to know the different types. Let's start down at the bottom with natural numbers. Natural numbers are the numbers, the way you learn them uh, when you were little, when you first learned to count. And they started with one. So one, two, three, four, and on and on and on. So no fractions, no decimals, unless they were to simplify to one of these numbers, and no negatives. Whole numbers are the same as natural, but they include one more number. They start with zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, and they go on and on and on. Again, no fractions, no decimals, unless they simplify to one of these numbers. So for example, if you had four over two, the fraction four over two, then it would simplify to two, and it would be a whole number even though it's also a fraction. Integers then, are going to include a little bit more. They're going to go from both directions, and so they will include all of the negative numbers, zero, and all of the positive numbers. Like the numbers underneath it, they are not going to include any fractions or decimals unless they simplify to one of these numbers. Now, rational numbers include all of these types of numbers, so natural, whole, and integer are all rational numbers. So these all are de uh, decimals or fractions that end and have a pattern are included in rational numbers, whereas they are not included in these three sections. So um, you might find uh, this number, one half, would be a rational number because it is a decimal that ends 0 0.5. 0 0.2 um, would be a rational number. It's a decimal and it ends. 0 0.3 repeating is going to be a rational number because it has a pattern. It continues on and on and on and on as 0 0.33333. So now that we've gone through the review, um, you might want to take a little bit of time and do the examples down at the bottom just to get yourself uh, familiar with them. If not, you can go ahead and, and move with me to the video. So the real number system video notes, let's take a look at those. What we want to do is we want to take these numbers that are over to the left and we want to put them uh, where they um, go on the chart. So what we're doing is we're looking for the um, first category that they would fit into. So natural would be the one that includes the smallest amount of numbers. Whole includes one more than natural. Integers includes a few more or quite a few more than whole. Rational includes more than integers, and then irrational is over here by itself. So if I looked at the number 7, I know that 7 is rational. I know that it's an integer. I know that it's whole. But the very first thing it's going to come under is natural. So I'm going to put A under natural numbers. Let's look at B, negative 36 over 12. Well, if I simplify that, I get negative 3. And negative 3, <clears throat> remember, is going to fall under integers because that's the first place where you can see a negative number in the category. So I would put B under integers. Letter C says the negative square root of 36. Don't confuse this with 
having a negative inside the rational uh, symbol. We want to have it on the outside. If it's outside, then we're going to take the square root of 36, which is 6, and we're going to make it negative. Since it's negative, again, it's going to go under integers. We talked about pi in the review. Pi is irrational, so d will go under irrational. e is a decimal, so we know that decimals are only going to fit in two different places, either rational or irrational. To be rational, it has to end, which it does in this case, so e is going under rational. f is a negative number again, and negative numbers are going to fall under integers. g, the negative square root of 10, well, the square root of 10, 10 is not um, one of those numbers that is a perfect square. Perfect squares are going to be ones that when they simplify, they simplify to an integer or whole number. This one does not, so we're going to put g under irrational numbers. h, 0. Remember that 0, the first time we see 0 in the categories is under whole. 2 and 1 sixth is a fraction, so it has to fit in one of two places, either rational or irrational. In this case, it's going to be rational. J, negative 0 0.7 repeating. Remember that rational includes repeating decimals, so that would go here. And K, if I simplify the square root of 4 over 81, I get 2 over 9. And 2 over 9 is a fraction that is going to be rational. So that's the way you would complete the exercise at the uh, top of your video notes. So let's take a look down at the bottom. At the bottom, it's wanting us to put an X in each category that the number would fit in. So what I would do is I would say, okay, negative 5. I'm going down here to natural. I know natural does not include negatives. I know whole does not include negatives, but integers does. So we'll put an X in integers. Rational includes integers, so it's going to go here. If it's rational, it can't also be irrational. It has to be one or the other but all of them are going to be real because we are not talking about any numbers right now that are not real. Number two is zero. I know that natural does not include zero, but whole does. Integers include zero, and then rational includes zero. Remember, if it's rational, it can't be irrational, but it is definitely real. Number three, negative two over three, or negative two-thirds. Natural does not include fractions. Whole does not include fractions. Integers does not include fractions. But rational numbers do include fractions. So it's going to be rational and real. Take a look at number 4. Number 4, if you simplify it, simplifies to 5. The square root of 25 is 5. Well, that's going to then start us down here at natural because 5 is a natural number. If it's natural, it's also whole then it's also an integer, it's also rational, and all of the numbers we're discussing are real. Pi, we discussed in the review again, pi is irrational, so that's our first irrational number, but it's also real. Real numbers include rational and irrational. If it's irrational, it can't be any of these four categories. Number six, let's simplify it. Simplifies to five over seven, 5 over 7 is a fraction. Fractions are going to be considered rational numbers, and they're also real. Negative the square root of 24. Now remember we talked about perfect squares. 24 is not a perfect square, so it's not going to simplify to something nice and pretty like 25 would. So it's going to be considered irrational and also real. Last, number 8, we have 0 0.2 repeating. 0 0.2 repeating is a, term, or a repeating decimal, and rational numbers include repeating decimals, and rational numbers are also real. So after you've finished your video notes and your review, you may go to the homework, and remember that homework 1 for the real number system is the first sheet that's going to be due for your um, homework assignment when you come back in August.